Hello team, and welcome to the Best of Five podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Claire Kreitzer. Today, we have a bonus episode for you. Join me and my brother Grant as we get into the Pitt v. Louisville game that we watched live at the Peterson Event Center. During the game, we reveal our predictions, obsess over Ico Jones' setting, praise Pitt's determination, discuss the results' impact on the upcoming tournament, and tell funny childhood stories about our crazy competitive spirits. Let's dive in. Today, we're doing a little bit of a bonus episode. I'm one of your hosts, Claire, and I'm joined with Grant, my brother. Hi. And we're going to talk about the Pitt Louisville game because we were fortunate enough to experience it live and we want to give you some of our takes hot or cold <laughs> <laughs> or warm it's lukewarm like exactly um oh yeah let's say what our predictions were i i predicted that Pitt was gonna win in four yes and i think i predicted louisville in four yeah and neither of us were right no <laughs> and then going into the fifth set I said Louisville 15-12. Yeah. And you said Pitt 15-13. Yeah. So you were more yeah. right. No, I, I think I actually said 16-14. Oh, wait. No, Because it you wasn't did. in the 50s. It wasn't. It, it wasn't. And then it was 17-15. Which yeah. was really no, close. No, 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 no. But whatever. Exactly. To start off, let's just set the scene. Absolutely. Downtown Oakland. It was a happening place. Lots of people. And I thought we did pack the peat. Absolutely. Pretty well. Shout out to the Raising Canes in Oakland. Yes. They really run that like the Navy. It's a great experience. So that started off a wonderful experience. Yes. Full stomachs heading into a very packed Peterson Event Peterson Center. Peterson Event Center. Yes. So their plans were to move from the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse into the peat so that they could fit more fans. And they did end up breaking the attendance record. I think it was... 8,800 and some. Yeah. There were a lot of people. We sat up on the second level, but even though we were kind of far away, we had a really great view and had a good angle of the game. Yeah, no, I I think it was actually a great view. I liked being mm-hmm. kind of removed slightly. Yes. Because that little corner we were in, there were only two rows. Exactly. So our backs were against a wall, but mm-hmm. we weren't super, super far away from the court. We had a nice bird's eye view yes. away from the huge crowd of yes. pit fans and i now that i think of it i don't remember seeing oh yeah they were just in that little corner the louisville fans like there yes. were not many no because when what when we went to the penn state game right there were a surprising amount of yes. nebraska fans exactly. that came from very far away right and i did not see very many louisville fans no and it looked like it was just their parents yeah you know yeah. you could tell the girls were turning around and yes. sing a little bit like, <laughs> yes i mean like hey guys yeah so you could tell there were close relationships and you didn't really see much red in the crowd except mm-hmm. for our sister quinn who was wearing her yeah. revolution volleyball shirt that sort of thing i guess we can move on to the game more yeah. so yeah and disclaimer i'm a huge louisville cardinals fan yeah i went into the game rooting for Louisville and really wanted them to win. Not that I don't like Pitt. I respect the athletes and the work that they do and the success that they have. They're not my favorite. And I like Louisville better. And I love the girls on their team and DBK and Cece McGraw, Dan Muskie, the whole coaching staff. I think they do a really great job of coaching the girls while also looking hot. (laughs) <laughs> serving looks serving serving <laughs> definitely that's yeah. that's definitely a big part of it <laughs> yeah. first set i feel like louisville was pretty pretty dominant i think the score was like 25 20 we were following the stats because the big screen didn't have like individual stats so we uh, had yeah. the box scores <clears throat> up what i did find interesting is louisville started down every single set yeah they, they yeah. would lose the first three maybe even four to five points yes and although you said that they normally have a rough time like start not necessarily a rough time but kind of a slow time getting started i think that showed and it also doesn't help when you have 
almost 9,000 people yes. in the gym all wearing blue. But I don't know, they're experienced with that kind they of stuff. Are. Like some people really feed off of that kind of energy. Yes. You know? Yeah. I like, I'm a person who loves that yeah. and can really use the energy from the crowd to yeah. propel myself to play better. Like, but I totally understand how that would be so overwhelming. Yes. And could cause you to have a couple missteps at the beginning. Yes. Yeah. And it kind of leaves the responsibility of bringing the energy to the girls on the court. Exactly. If Iko Jones gets a big block, whoever gets a big block, then you can only hear the little muffled you yes. Louisville fans in the corner. Yes. So on the court, you really have to bring the energy, which I think they did for the most yes, part. Yes, I think so too. And for both teams, I mean, playing in front of such a big crowd is such great preparation for the tournament. Yeah, because it's going to be even more helpful for Pitt now that they're in the top three yes. after taking down Louisville. Yes. Now they're going to have two home games for the NCAA right. tournament. Which this is actually setting them more up like, very nice. More like they could potentially have four. Oh, oh my because goodness. Because first yeah. round, second yeah. round, and then Sweet 16, Elite 8. Okay, yeah. Could all be oh, at Pitt. But that's awesome. the big thing is they have to beat Miami tomorrow. Oh, okay. And Miami just swept Georgia Tech. Oh, but <laughs> Pitt also swept Georgia Tech. Right. Just recently. Yes. Okay, so first set, Pitt Louisville, 25 19. Okay, yep. Second set. Oh, second set was <gasps> second crazy. Set, yeah, we have to talk specifically about the second set. Because it ended up being 26 24 Louisville. Right. But Pitt had the opportunity to finish several opportunities. Several wasn't opportunities. It like 21, 20. I think it was 24 21. Yeah, I think, I, I think that's it was. in my brain, so I'm going to say that. It was 24 21. Right. And Louisville fought back to take yes. that set. And what I think happened was Pitt was like, oh, okay, we did this. Yes. Like, and that happens to a lot of people, a lot of teams. Like, right. once you can see the end, your mind goes off the court. Yes. And you're just like, okay, we're yes. going to get this point. And in order to get 25 points, you need such a hyper focus. Absolutely. And if you lose that focus for even a half second, yeah. it gives room for Louisville to plow ahead. And I mean, they really did. They. Oh, yeah were clawing yes. and fighting their way. I think Elena Scott, the first two sets, really struggled. Definitely. Uh, actually, not like really struggled. She just wasn't making the moves and the digs that she is capable of making. Yeah, yeah. Which are very high level. Totally. And she just wasn't wasn't there. I think it wasn't that she was shanking ball after ball, letting balls drop right yeah. in front of her. Of course, that's not going to happen with Elena Scott. Yeah. But she just wasn't necessarily there. No. And I think she's such an integral part of that team. Yes. Like her defense gets, you know, everyone. Like, right. Even when you're playing against 8,000 Pitt fans, yes. a dig like that is remarkable. And, like, right. even Pitt fans, you're going to hear in the crowd, like, oh, oh my. my goodness. <laughs> oh, my. What? Exactly. Like, how does that happen? And they, and they require her to cover such a big, oh, yeah. big area of the court. Totally. That I think Pitt was just really exploiting that. Yeah. In the yeah. first two sets, I, that was a way. I mean, it didn't help Pitt get the wins in the first two. But yeah, I think the third set was boring. Yeah, because after Pitt lost the second set, you and I were... Mm -hmm. And it really felt like the vibe in the yes. gym was like, okay, well, this was fun. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it almost felt like, okay, Louisville, just finish it so we can all get out of here. Honestly, but that's what honestly. it felt like in the gym. Yeah. I think it was the fact that Pitt had the opportunity to take that second set somewhat right. easily. Right. It was right there for them. So I think it's such it's, a gross feeling yes. to be up by several points and then lose the set. Like, yes. It, it's horrible. So Because yeah. think about all that momentum that Louisville, right. looking back, I don't even know how Pitt won the third set. I It was 26-24, so it was redemption. I think the third set, we were all hesitant because we were like, are they going to have the fight? You know, because they didn't yeah. show any fight no. in the first or the second no. set. So it was like, are they going to come out? Or are we, yeah. or are we just going to 3-0 this, get swept, and yeah. go home? So I think that's why the third set was a tough one for Louisville, too, because I think they felt like 
they were going to be able to take it. Oh, definitely. They felt they felt good about what they were doing. Yeah. And had confidence going into the third. Yeah. And I mean, I want to know what their mentality was going into the game mm-hmm. because they Louisville swept Pitt earlier yes. in the season. Yeah, at Louisville. So who knows right. what was going to happen, but I don't know. I'm interested to see what they were thinking yes. going in. Do they feel confident like oh yeah, we got this or Right. I mean, I think with Pitt so much of it has to do with their momentum. Yeah. They're a momentum team. Like we saw in the second set, they had all the momentum, but then once Louisville took some of it, they kind of sat back. Yeah. And then that's why the third set, it it was point for point. You didn't know who was going to win because neither team really got the momentum. Yeah, definitely. So I think probably what Louisville was thinking is we need to stay in control of the momentum as much as we can. For sure. Because... I think it's a product of Pitt's youth. You know, they have Olivia yes. Bad- Babcock and Tori Stafford playing all six rotations. And I think younger players are just more susceptible to feeding into the momentum or letting yeah. the momentum control their game. Especially playing at that level. Yes. Like- yes, for sure. I felt like the fourth set was definitely Pitt kind of had, what, what was the score of the fourth? Uh, I think it was 25-21. Okay, yeah. Pitt had a lot of momentum after that third set. I think they were feeding off the crowd. The crowd was a little bit more optimistic. And they just, they had some belief, you know. They had belief in each other and they were rolling. I think Emma Monk had some good swings. Totally. Yeah. And she had some really monster blocks. Yes, yes. Yeah. Because at the beginning of the game, she wasn't, like, you. I, I remember you saying, like, can she hit it harder? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was kind of rude. But it was. It, like, but also, their their connection was just off. It, yeah. You know, the yeah. ball was a little bit behind her, so she wasn't able to put as much power onto yeah. it. Um, I'm just realizing, if you do the math, they scored the exact same amount of points. <gasps> no way. Yeah. Because, like, the right. second and third set are a wash. Oh. Louisville has two more. And then right. they won by two. Wow. So that evens out. They scored the exact same amount of points. It just shows that like, yes! sometimes the like the better team doesn't win. Or exactly. I'm not saying Pitt isn't better than Louisville, but if I were Louisville, that's what I would be saying exactly. right now. It just literally doesn't work out. Exactly. Like, and it sucks. Yeah. And that's why we have to grind and try to work to control as many controllables as we can. Exactly. So yeah, wow. That, that makes sense because... I don't feel like either team played to the best of their ability. I agree. But they were playing to try to beat each other. Yes. Yeah. And Uh they were playing clearly at the same level. Right. Like they scored the same amount of points. Right. Exactly. And neither team really showed that they were leaps and bounds ahead of one another. No. So it just came down to a couple points at the end. Yeah. But yeah, it it was very exciting, those last two sets, especially. Sets four and five. Yeah. I mean, it was a very momentous game going into the last week of the regular season because it propelled Pitt to number three, and that makes them able to host four games, potentially, if everything works out. And it pushed Louisville down to seven. Yeah, yeah. Which really... They were at five, right? Yes. Yeah. Or no, they may have been at four. Oh. Yeah. And they went down three points and Pitt went up three points. I just didn't think... I don't know. That doesn't seem right to me. No. Because like we said, they were playing at the same level. Right. It's not like Pitt swept Louisville. No. At all. Exactly. It was a reverse sweep. Yeah. But I don't know. I think what we learned from this game... If you look at it set from set, is that like Louisville is able to finish. Yes. Because even the way they came back in that second set. Right. To take it, that was very impressive. Yeah. But if you look at it from the whole game, they couldn't finish. They They got reverse swept. Exactly. Yeah. It sucks. I do. We didn't mention our favorite part of the game, though. Iko Jones setting. Oh, Iko Jones setting. Like It actually gave me so much life. Yes. I was so happy to see it. And her butter. Oh her my hands God, yeah. are butter. Absolutely. Okay. Such a slay. And the coaching staff and all the girls, they're so comfortable. It's like, oh, yep, Ellie Glock, you're out. 
yeah. you know, um, yeah. they put a right side player into block and it's like, yep, I go do your thing. And she was setting Kara Cressy in the middle on a one. <laughs> she jumped up and saved the ball from yes. going over. It was yes. crazy because it wasn't a desperate thing where it's like, oh, no. like, we need this big block on the outside. We no. need it. Otherwise, like we're going to lose. It exactly. was just like, let's do this. Right. Iko, you got right. this. Yeah. Like, let's like- try to get a big block in front of. Tori Stafford and Valeria Vasquez Gomez. And it worked once or twice. Yeah. They tried it probably yeah. a handful of times yeah. just to try to shake things up. But we were obsessed, yes. honestly. Yes. <laughs> and then I think Pitt tried to do it, but theirs was frantic because I think Dan Fisher saw what Louisville and DBK were doing. Definitely. And I don't remember what set it was. It was probably in the third or the fourth. Dan Fisher puts in Blair Bayless, takes Rachel Fairbanks out, and then had Olivia Babcock and Emmy Klicka, the libero. I I saw him talking to them. And right up until the serve went over the net, he was still talking to Olivia Babcock about it. And it definitely was frantic. And then I think Blair Bayless, the right side hitter from Pitt, she got used <laughs> yeah. and it was right back out. And yeah. I, so I think that just goes to show if you're going to make a change like that, you have to be confident and you have to believe in it. Oh, and totally. it can't be, as you said, like desperate. desperate. It yeah. has to be like, oh, this is something that we have in our back pocket yeah. that we trust and that yeah. we can use if, yeah, say we, we want to try a bigger block. Yeah. Because I believe so much in learning every aspect of volleyball. Yes. You mentioned that Iko Jones is a setter on the... She has set. She has set. Yes. On the Jamaican team? Yes, the Jamaican national team. Okay, yeah. And I just think it's so important to learn all aspects of the game because I personally credit a lot of my Mm -hmm. volleyball knowledge to just the fact that as a high school player, as a middle Mm -hmm. school player, as a college player, I immerse myself with different positions yes because it helps you learn more about your own set position exactly and it just helps you see the court so much better yeah exactly and can help you read your opposing team so much better too because you're like okay if i was hitting as as an outside what would i hit you know like that sort of thing for sure yeah and that's why with the switch that they made taking rachel fairbanks out it was desperate and i mean i'm sure that Olivia Babcock could yes. dish up some sets, but in a situation like that, when, you know, it's a top mm-hmm. 10 match and you've taken a few sets off of each other. Right. It it, it just felt strange. And right it there. looked like they had never done it before. Exactly. Oh, they definitely had not. No. Which is very strange. Like, yes. Work on those things in practice. Exactly. Another thing I wanted to talk about about the game is just how much space the liberos take up and serve receive. Oh, yeah. They're taking up at least 50% of the court. Oh, for sure. And as a player, I guess I just never saw that. And I would have loved to do that because it makes your job easier. Yeah. And a big part of what they do, too, is (laughs) what they show. They show one way and then when they're actually yes. actively going to serve the ball yeah they shift over exactly yeah i can remember the serve receive formation for Pitt. they had tori stafford literally with her foot on the sideline yeah and then olivia babcock beside her tori stafford's probably taking up 10 percent. olivia babcock's taking up 25 percent. yeah and then emmy click is taking up the rest for sure yeah and i think that more court for the libero but I also think it takes out some of the pressures of having to communicate. Oh, yeah. Because if it's like, go get any ball you can yes. take, that is so liberating. For sure. Because then it's not like, I don't have to think about yes. whose seam is who and who's no. beside me and whatever. It's just go get the ball. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah. And I mean, it's obvious, but like that is the libero's job. Yeah. With a lot of other positions, there's a bit more of a complexity. Yes. There's a little more responsibility. If you're an outside hitter, you have right. to pass, you have to play defense, you have mm-hmm. to swing, you have to block, you have to do. Yes. When you're a libero, you have to play hardcore defense. Yes. And serve, receive the crap out of the ball. Exactly. And then sometimes help set. 
Yeah. But that's it. But that's it. Yeah. And, but it's <clears throat> a lot easier said than done. Of course. And there's a lot more that goes into it technically, but mm -hmm. if you look at it on paper, that's what your job is. Exactly. So yeah, of course, take up 50% of the court, girl. Right. Like, no, exactly. Go get it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, Elena Scott does the same thing. She takes up so much space in server C. Yeah. And her, more than Emmy Klicka, takes up so much space in defense. Oh. She's also playing 50% of the yeah. court on defense, whereas I think pit side, it's more balanced yeah. on defense. Yeah. I would have just loved to had seen Elena Scott have a better game. I know. Because she's just iconic in my yes. head. Yes. And she's my number one libero yeah. right now in yeah. the NCAA. Yeah. And we saw a glimpse of it. I think it was in the third or fourth set. Yes. I think it was Babcock hit like two or three balls right. at her. Incredibly hard hit. Yes. Pitt was in system. Elena Scott just had two crazy yes. ups. And then on the third swing, there was maybe one block up. Right. And she kind of got her hands on it. But yeah. that was the end of the rally in it. Yeah. It was a sad ending of that rally because Elena Scott that was, was eating it up. Working, But yeah. It was still fun to see. I have an image of my in my head of her like just diving. Oh yeah, fully Superman out like yeah midair body yes, parallel to yes. the floor. And, and I was like, oh my god, she jumped. <laughs> she jumped. Oh my god. Yes, yes. And some <laughs> of her sets. Oh yeah. Because Pitt was really attacking the right back. Yeah. Trying to get, but Elena Scott was a setter <clears throat> in high school. Okay. Yeah. And she was recruited to Louisville as a setter DS. Mm -hmm. Okay. She can dish up yeah. a and she mother. Is Yes, like, yes. Yeah. Do you remember that one set she had? It was a back set, but she had one leg. Oh, up. oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Because prior to setting the ball, she was actually in front of the ten foot line. Yes. So she had to get behind the ten foot line. Yeah. Set on one foot. It was crazy. And reverse flow. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It was incredible. Yeah. So there were a lot of challenges. I think both teams especially their coaches are kind of notorious for getting on the refs. Yeah. They just have a rivalry. Yes. Like Pitt and exactly. Louisville and their coaches. Like yes. you can feel that. Right. And I wasn't obsessed with the up ref. I didn't recognize him. I didn't think he really did much, honestly. Um, and you know, I'm just on my like officials yeah grind like tor <laughs> you're trying to like burn them at the stake like well i just want them to do their jobs and do their jobs at the level that these girls are playing at yeah and be open to criticism yes because these girls are being looked at under a microscope yes. literally a microscope yeah. like the cameras that are oh constantly on them and the least you can do is maybe hear out these girls that are playing volleyball every day and <laughs> yes. like live, breathe, and eat volleyball. Yeah. Because although, yeah, they're sometimes going to be really annoying and like seize calls that no one else in the gym <laughs> did. But I understand like being a ref is not necessarily easy, but you have to understand you're actually not always right. No, and you can't see everything. Yeah. You know, yeah. the girls on the court or the line judge or the down ref, they probably see things that you don't see. And I just get very frustrated with officials that are high and mighty and won't listen or it's just obvious that they can't keep up with the pace of play. Oh, yeah. And they're dismissive. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, no, if you would work as hard as these athletes do with your officiating, it would be better. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And I respect officials, obviously, because I we need them. Because we need them. I respect the, ro the rules of volleyball and want to follow them all the time. Absolutely. But I also want the quality play to be reflected in quality officiating. For sure. Yeah. I would have loved to had seen some more production from Louisville's middles. Yes. And actually just the middles in general, because looking back, it truly was just a battle of pin hitters. You're so right. Because what did the middles do? Emma Monk blocked. Yeah. Uh, she That's... blocked and had like a few kills. Yes. But Chiamaka Wokolo? I don't remember her being in. I don't either. Which might actually be a good thing. I think yes. she may have just yes. been doing her job, not necessarily and standing out, which no. 
sometimes that's what just what you need from a middle. Exactly. You need them to close the blocks. Yeah. You need them to transition and try to get one-on-one blocks. Yeah. And yeah, sometimes you don't always need them to hit. But I do yeah. think that would have changed the course of the game. I think so too. Especially for Louisville, because I think their two middles are better than Pitt's two middles. I agree. Yeah. You have Kara Cressy yeah. and PK Kong who can take over games. Yeah, because- and Emma Monk, she's not Brie Kelly, who was injured for the rest of the year and is the transfer from Florida. Yeah. She's great. She's good. Looks like a great oh, teammate yeah. and plays with so much joy and yeah. you can see that. On I, the court. I actually think she's very much what Pitt needs. That's true. They need, and I mean, like, they have a young team, but she's just light and competitive. And like you said, she's very happy to be there. You can tell she's so thankful to be on the court. Right. And it shows in her play. She really does give it everything. Definitely. Yeah. And she gets mad when she knows she didn't do something right or she missed something. So yeah, it'll just be interesting to see. I think going forward, though, Louisville, in order to win a national championship and i think louisville can yeah is they need to be more balanced with their attack yeah because anna de beer and charity looper and Ico jones obviously slay the house finna eat. They finna down eat. Yeah. no they're hungry they're leaving no crumbs exactly but it just gets predictable yeah and if you have teams that you know that your middles are better than their middles yeah you should really use that because that's Definitely. where you'll get really great production and it'll be helpful late in the tournament. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't remember PK Kong I or know. Kara Cressy <laughs> getting like any kills. I know. I remember Kara Cressy a little bit. I feel like in the first two sets she had some production. But PK, I can remember a few blocks, but that's it. Yeah. And normally PK can put the ball seven feet. Yeah, yeah. And same with Karen Cressy. Exactly. Like, if there would have been some that, monster kills, I, I would remember. Right. Because, like, I actually love all of those women volleyball players. Like, so Yes. Much. Yeah, no. And before the game, you were like, I can't wait to see <laughs> Louisville's medals. <laughs> literally, literally. I love them. I, yes. I just, like, I don't know. On a platonic level, I'm in love with them. Yeah, no, exactly. And, I mean, their skill levels, like, yeah. Yeah. Get after exactly. it. Exactly. But I think that is the answer for Louisville going forward. Totally. More totally. Middle, yeah. Middle. But I think they weren't able to get the middles going because their serve receive was not. No. Super solid. It wasn't. There weren't a ton of shanks, but they were running most of their offense behind the 10 foot line. Yeah. If I remember correctly, it seemed like they were targeting Charity Looper, but Charity Looper yes. wasn't passing very many of them. No, because she was on the sideline. Exactly. And it they ended up being her. Anna DeBeer. Yes. Who would pass it because Charity Looper only had to take up maybe three feet. Literally, yeah, like and she, she was, was already bad. transitioning out to hit. Yeah, exactly. So Anna DeBeer would take those balls and I don't know, they weren't perfect in system passes. Which... No, I also felt like a lot of the passes that Elena Scott gave to Ellie Glock were, they didn't have much height on them. Yeah. They were very much just... Like, here you go, go, <laughs> yeah, run, yeah. you know. <laughs> like, get this point, please. Yeah. Pitt to win 17-15 in the fifth set. That shows some fight and that shows some determination. And they were super happy after that win. I mean, obviously, they should have been. They, you know, did the reverse sweep, battled back. And Louisville was definitely upset because I looked to see the, the pit fans celebrating and then I looked down at the Louisville side of the court and everybody was gone. <laughs> like, I was like, I was like, how did the coaches get out of there so fast? Because I saw the girls running to the locker room, but I didn't see the coaches at all. And I was like, I know they didn't just run across no. the court. So they must have snuck out or really? like they got airlifted out. <laughs> yes. Like... They transported themselves yeah. out. But yeah. That's actually so relatable because it's not bad sportsmanship. Like, no. You go through the line, smile, good game, good game, good game, good game. And then you leave. Right. Because truly, when you're a competitor, it's embarrassing. Like, there's a sense of embarrassment, no matter how much you rationalize it with, like, that was a great game. We're a great team. Yes. Like, it didn't work out in our favor. Yeah. One team's going to win, one team's going to lose. Exactly. It still just feels embarrassing. Right. 
And maybe that's just us, but I think that's just a competitive feeling. Yes. Because whenever you give it your all. Yes. And you don't get the outcome you want. Yeah. It's devastating. Yeah. You know? Or um, like you want to give it your all, but you're just not having the best day. Yes. Like, and that sucks. Yeah. And I mean, we have a personal experience with losing the Whippy Old Championship. Yeah. And then having to stand there. Get a dull silver medal. <laughs> we have our the one that's like, been sitting on the coffee table two for them. two or three weeks. Like, and then they're asking for pictures, and there's announcements, and yes. like people are crying, yes. and they're asking you to smile, and it's like I just want to leave. Exactly, exactly. Like, <laughs> so I totally respect yeah. the lose and get out. Yeah, and like, there's everyone knows there's so many lessons yes. to be learned and a loss but it doesn't make it feel better <laughs> no no and it's like we can think about those in like two hours but yeah. give me two hours just to be mad and sad yeah. and feel exactly yeah because if we're bringing it back to the whip Hill championship right it is absolutely an accomplishment right. like it stings but it is an accomplishment in itself and when you're a competitor and when you set goals at the beginning of yeah. the season it's tough when Absolutely. you when you run into a hic- yeah. hiccup all, along the way, yeah, especially. Okay, we don't have to talk about pure volleyball. <laughs> no, we can. Okay, I think okay. Would like no, it. I think so too. Especially after like our season last year, mm-hmm. where we went through and won everything. Yes, yes. And of course, we had a decent amount of pushback, but right, we were really, really tested. Yes, only once, I would say. I agree. And that was in the PIAA semifinals. Yeah. And then we ended up losing to that team that we beat in the semifinals in the this year in the quarterfinals. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it, guys. Thanks for joining. We're going to go cry. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go. <laughs> and for so sure. in order to learn from the loss, you need to feel those feelings and then work, yeah. on, work through yeah. The things that you need to learn and yeah if you truly are just okay with it then you're holding yourself back exactly a lot of the times people bring their worries totally. and bring their fights and yeah, things yeah. into the gym yeah which is never good yeah for us too we're very good at compartmentalizing for sure and i think volleyball is a reason for that yeah. because we knew every day no matter what two hours lock in yeah. for practice work hard forget about everything else. Yeah. Whereas that's a hard skill to come by. Yeah. Because especially, and I really realize that now, no matter how depressed I am, Yes. no matter how much I hate my job, when I'm in the volleyball gym, it's completely different. I don't care about anything. Like I'm literally just focused on volleyball because that's what I love. And it helps me like channel those emotions into fun, competitive, like aggressive play. Yes. And also I feel like time kind of stops too whereas like yeah. yes i'm looking at the clock because i need to make sure that we're getting everything we need to get done yes on the agenda for and the day. like i'm kind of hungry so like i'm right. ready for dinner <laughs> <laughs> right but other than that i'm not worried about when i like oh i have laundry i need to get done or oh yeah, i need yeah. to make this call for work or you know for those two hours i'm focused on volleyball and making the girls the best athletes they can be. exactly yeah and just trying to compete and have fun yeah Competing is so fun. It's so fun. But there's just a lot that comes with it. Like, yes. Jeez, I am just like so competitive. I know. Like I saw this video. Did you see on my story yesterday of this little girl? It was like her first grade turkey trot. Yes, and I did it, see that. Yes. And she probably got 400 meters in, out in front of her class yeah. and didn't stop. No. Did not look behind refuse to lose all gas no brakes exactly like, and that's how i'm trying to be yes, all the time yeah and that's how i am yes like i here's a little fun story for you folks at home um <laughs> <laughs> when i was about like five years old yeah no i was probably a little older i was probably like eight uh we were at our grandparents house all of our cousins playing mm-hmm. the classic yard game jackpot oh work my uncle was throwing up the ball me and my cousins were catching it, collecting the jackpot. My one cousin <laughs> <laughs> would consistently, like after you would catch the ball, rip it out of your hands <laughs> and claim that like that's how jackpot worked. But last time I checked, it was about like catching the ball. 
mid air, mid air, <laughs> not trying to like pry it out of each other's hands <laughs> to cheat and win. So that had happened a few times, and I'm not one to sit idly by while there's cheating happening, and I'm like losing because of this. Um, right. So I'm trying to stick up for myself. I'm probably being a little brat, fighting with my uncle, fighting with my cousins. They're like, no, that's how it is. That's how we do it. Blah, blah, blah. It got to the point where I, (laughs) my cousin did it one more time and I shoved him to the ground and punched him till his nose bled. Like I, now that's toxic. That's dangerous. I have gone through, (laughs) I've, I've dealt with my anger issues. I'm not that kid anymore at all. But the competitiveness is still there. Yeah. Just not the aggression. I have an also funny anecdote about probably a similar time. Yeah. We were up at our grandparents' house after church probably one Sunday. And we were playing wiffle ball in the yard. Fun. Awesome. Like, that's my jam. And I think this is our other uncle. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I have another story. So this is a different uncle was the pitcher. Okay. And I think I was the catcher at the time and his daughter was up to bat and she had three strikes and I'm like, okay, three strikes. You're You're out. out. We all know how this works. (laughs) Loser. (laughs) But like, okay, one, you know, one down, two to go, one down, two to go. Go for your porch. (laughs) And my aunt's like, no, 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 you know, keep, keep swinging. Keep. And like, We're all around the same age, too. So it's not like, oh, she's a baby. Give her a few extra shots. So I was like, oh, no, three strikes. She's out. And he's like, no, no. And still at this time, I don't do well with confrontation. So my emotions just overwhelmed me. And I stormed off. I went up, hid in the attic, cried. I'm like, ah! You know, and I think that's another reason why I have issues with officials. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> where I'm like, don't, don't try to control this. Yeah. We're gonna play by the rules, and we're we're gonna play fairly. Yeah, because we need to have an equal playing field in order to compete. Yes, and I, yeah. But then one other thing that I was gonna say that really shows our competitiveness is when we were kids, we had to have Smack Talk Wednesday. Yeah, <laughs> it was one day out of the week where we were, we were able to really smack talk and really compete when we played the Wii. Specifically Wii, Wii Sports. Yeah, specifically Wii Sports, like tennis and bowling. It, it was cutthroat. Yeah. And we were just getting in too many fights on regular days of the week. Then my parents were like, okay, you can have one day of the week where you demolish. Can verbally abuse each other. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. But all the other days, it has to be healthy competition. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah so funny uh but yeah being a competitor is so fun and so rewarding absolutely but with those highs come lows absolutely. so i'm really feeling for louisville this week yeah, there's a lot to learn a lot to learn and on wednesday they get another big acc rivalry they're going to georgia tech so yeah they'll be able to redeem themselves and i'm interested to see who the acc champions are yeah be. Yeah. Because it's really down to the wire, and especially with a lot of them losing some key matches. So True. it'll be really interesting to see because a lot of conferences already have their automatic champion. qualifier and their champion. Oh, yeah. Um, but the ACC does not. No, no, no. Yeah. Exciting stuff. Definitely. So we hope you enjoyed this podcast. And can't wait for all of the good volleyball that'll be on this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for listening. Thanks for having me. Yep. Oh, of course. You're welcome anytime. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for listening to the Best of Five podcast. Tune in on Friday as Grace and I gear up for the last weekend of regular season play. Talk all things liberos and prep to make our bracket predictions. Please remember to like, subscribe, and follow the Best of Five podcast. Why is volleyball the best? Because it's the best of five.